my shirt, maybe not, is one word, and the word is continue. It's continue. Second Timothy chapter 3 reminds us how bad our society is in which we're living in. It also tells us that at the end of verse 14, Paul says, no matter what, continue. It's not time to back down. It's not time to give up. It's not time to throw in the towel. It's time to continue and press on for the glory of God. So this year we're going to continue, amen? amen? We're going to continue preaching the Bible, singing these old good songs, going out and reaching people for the glory of God, picking up kids on buses, giving our tithes and offerings. It's going to be a great year in the year 2020. 2020 is going to be an awesome year as we continue for the glory of God, amen? amen. All right, we'll do some more things in just a moment, but now, Brother Steve, I think we've got the handshaking song and all of that, and uh, I'll do some more stuff afterwards, okay? Go ahead. Old song called The Old Country Church. Oh, the song for what I'm singing, you can sing with me. You ready? Oh, I'd like to go back to that old country church to hear the songs of praise. How the people would sing, they would make the heavens ring at that old your Bible tonight, please, to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 3 tonight, please. 2 Timothy, chapter number 3. In case you're wondering, I do see what time it is. Of course, you know by now our theme for the year is one word. The word is continue. And you'll find that word in uh, verse 14. We're going to read that in a moment, but I'm going to read, I'm going to read verse, verse 1 to verse 5. And when we start getting through this, you're going to say, man, this is all negative. 
world's just in such a terrible condition and it's just negative preacher you're supposed to encourage us and I'll do my best to at the very last point of the sermon tonight okay but it's going to be it's going to warn you a lot of negative and then one great positive at the end okay so let's go ahead and get into our text you know what because it's a new year you can have a seat yeah you can have a seat I know some of y'all are tired and all that so second uh, Timothy chapter 3 not a new thing just tonight okay look in Verse 1, this know also, Paul says, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Here's what Paul says to Timothy. From such, turn away. Now look in verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. I want to preach on that thought tonight. The one word is this. The word is continue. Continue. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this wonderful time we've had tonight in the house of the Lord. Thank you for the special music, Lord, for all the, the time we've had just announcing and talking about things. But Lord, the next few moments is the most important part of this service, the time where we have our Bibles open and you... Lord, through the Word of God, speak to us. And I pray you may do that tonight. You may challenge us and, and encourage us, Lord, in the things of, of God. And even though society we live in is just waxing worse and worse, you told us that, Lord, we still have a commitment, we still have a, a, a job to do, and that is just to continue. Lord, for your glory, and Lord, for looking for your blessings, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. If we could go back, we, we, we can't do that, and we shouldn't do that, but if we could take out our quills and our parchment paper in the year 2020 and write a description of the year 2020, we'd write pretty much what Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 3. As we read through the first five verses, we see, you know what? That's America. That's America today. And as Paul is talking to Timothy, here's what he's doing. He's preparing him even 2,000 years ago for the coming of the Lord. Now you think about that. 2,000 years ago, Paul was preparing Timothy for the Lord's return. He was telling Timothy, you know what, Timothy? Days are drawing near. The Lord's return is imminent. And before the Lord comes back, all these things are going to be happening. And this is what's going to characterize society as the Lord, before the Lord returns. And he says all these things, and folks, that's 2020. That's happening in our world today. And so the command to us, the encouragement to us is this. No matter what is happening, uh, we gotta, we got to continue. Yes, society has just gone so far down the tubes. And yes, financially things are looking up, but morally they're looking way down. Politically looking way down. The situation in our world is not looking good. It's all looking, it's all looking bad. What men are doing, what people are doing, it's all looking bad. But wait for it, unless you're a child of God. And then it's looking up. Because we know these things must come to pass before the Lord is going to return. The Bible says this in 1 Peter 4, 7, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. 2 Peter 3, 12 says this, Looking for and hastening into the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Listen to Revelation chapter 22, verse 20 which testifieth these things, saith, Surely I come quickly, amen, even so come, Lord Jesus. All that was written 2,000 years ago. And if it was true, and if the Lord's return was that imminent 2,000 years ago, are you with me? How much closer is it today? I mean, a lot of things have happened in the last 2,020 years. <laughs> A lot of things have come to pass and, and nothing, nothing is getting more pleasant. It's waxing worse and worse, just like Paul said it would. So with that being said tonight, I'm going to do my best to get through the outline 
Very quickly, tonight you must listen like you've never listened before. Turn on that fast forward listen button, okay? And we're going to get through this, okay? Number one, notice this. The reality of the last days. The reality. Here's what Paul said. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. These last days, first of all, they are perilous days. The word perilous has the idea of being troublesome, <laughs> being dangerous, fierce, being hard to bear. You know, every generation has had those perilous days. Uh, those of you who are older than me, some of you much older than me, you can look back even in your lifetime and you say, even back then things were perilous. How much more perilous are they today? Every generation has perilous days, but these days are even more perilous. It's more dangerous. It's more fill in the blank. These are perilous days. Number two, it's also predictable days. Why, do we, why are we surprised when we hear something on the news that's just terrible? Why are we surprised at the way our world is, is acting? Paul told us perilous times are going to come. And he's told us this, that it's going to wax worse and worse. They're predictable days. Paul said this, this know also. Isn't it interesting? All the things Paul told Timothy in these, in these, three, chap, in these three books, all the things... All the things that, that Paul said, Timothy, you've got you, you to know this, you've got to know about how to preach and, and how to pray and how to, how to live the Christian life, how to be the leader, how to be the pastor, all these things Paul told Timothy. Then he says this, this know also. In other words, you've got to learn this too, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. These days are perilous. These days are predictable. But thankfully, these days also, we notice, are providential. The world, it may seem like, is spiraling out of our control. And I'll tell you, it is spiraling out of our control. But it's not for one second spiraling out of God's control. He's got his, his proverbial finger on the button. He's got the world right where he wants it to be. He's allowing these things to come to pass to prepare the, the church and to prepare the world for the coming of His Son. It's providential days. It's not, it may be a surprise to us, but it's not a surprise to the Lord. These days are uh, of depravity. Uh, mankind has sunk to new depths. Our political system is in shambles. We're at war with terrorism and, and drug cartels. The liberal media and agenda is trying to ruin all that we stand for. But it's not, it, it is out of our control. But God, listen to me, church, God is completely in control. It's not caught him off guard. He isn't scratching his head wondering what to do. He knows exactly what's happening, and it's happening just the way he sees fit. It's providential days. Notice number two. The rebellion of the last days. Let me read verse two through the first part of verse five again. Paul, Paul says in verse one, perilous days are coming. And then he describes these perilous days. Listen carefully. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Let's stop right there. There's a war against those things that are good. There's a war against the church. There's a war against the Christian. There's a war against what's good about America. There's a war against those things that you and I think are good. And traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. That's the rebellion of these last days. In these few verses, we notice the desire of men. I won't take time to explain to you what all of those, all of those things are talking about. Maybe I'll email it to you because it's a long list. 
But Paul, Paul lists these things, and it's almost like Paul, in his, in his spiritual telescope, is looking ahead to 2020 and saying, how's the world going to be in 2020? It's going to be all these things. It's going to be people are going to love themselves more than they love God. It's going to be a world where there's covetous peace, uh, people and, and boasters and people are going to be proud, not proud in a good way, but proud in a bad way. There's going to be those that are blasphemers. There's going to be those that are disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, and go on down the list. That's what Paul is describing 2,000 years ago. But it's like he's looking ahead and seeing what men desire today. That's what men desire today. They desire all these negative bad things. Notice the desire of men and then notice the display of men having a form, listen carefully please, a form of godliness. In Henry County, there are, I, I studied this one time, there are over 500 churches in Henry County. That's all kind of churches. There are, I think, seven or eight of our kind of church. So that tells you there's 400 and however many, not our kind of church. <laughs> we don't have a lack of churches. I mentioned this morning, we have Bibles on our phone. I've got four Bibles on my phone. Isn't that crazy? I've got a Bible right here. I've got Bibles on my bookcase. I've got Bibles at home. It's not for a lack of, uh, of churches. It's not for a lack of Bibles. It's not, a, it's not for a lack of, here's the word, religious stuff. It's a lack of power. We see all these churches and all of these, of these apps and all of these things that, that should be things that are good, and they are good in and of themselves, but it's not making people more spiritual. It's not making society better off that we have more churches today than we've ever had. If Henry County has 400 whatever churches, you would think Henry County would be, I mean, the Bible Belt would be Henry County, Georgia. <laughs> but it's not. The, the problem is, like Paul says, having a form of godliness. There's too many Christians just playing the game, putting on their fancy clothes and dressing up and singing the songs and coming to the services, not just in our church, but in all churches. And just kind of, you know, wearing like a sticky note on their shirt says, I'm a Christian. When they walk in the door and you walk out, they take that note off and throw it away. They're not a Christian anymore. They have a form of godliness. That's the display of men. Men, ladies, young people... Society, we, we, we claim to be spiritual. We claim to be right with the Lord. We claim to have all this religious identity. But Paul continues, we notice the display of men. But look in verse 3, uh, number 3 and verse 5, the denial of men. But denying the power thereof. Somebody said this, hell is filled with religious people who only possessed a form of, of godliness, but had no power. How do we expect, or, or I should say, why do we expect God to bless when all we have is a form and not the power? Where does the power come from? Ourselves? No, not, no, I've got no power. I mean, I'm weak as can be. You've got no power power in and of yourselves. Where's our power come from? The Holy Spirit of God. Through reading His Word, through hearing the Word of God. That's where power comes from. And that's what separates, if you will, the wheat from the tares. Those that claim to be part of the family of God and those that are not part of the family of God. Those that claim to know Christ and those that do not know Christ. Those that have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They won't let the power of God change their life for the good. The rebellion of these last days. Number three, notice very quickly, with all the negative happening, with all the... The, the negativity from the first few verses. 
Look in verse 5. Notice the responsibility of the last days. There's the reality, the rebellion, and then the responsibility. So what do we do? Well, I know what we should do. We should just kind of close the doors and, of the church and just kind of go about our business. If the world is so bad anyway, and if we're not making an impact anyway, let's just close the doors, let's just stay home on Sunday and watch football. What's our responsibility? Notice, number one, our discernment. Look in verse 5. From such, turn away. From such, turn away. That takes discernment on our part. It takes, it, it takes you and I knowing right from wrong. It takes you and I knowing what is spiritual and then knowing what is not spiritual. It takes you and I knowing what's, what's, what's Christ-like and what's carnal. It takes you and I knowing good from evil and, and knowing right from wrong. And where does that come from? It comes from the Word of God. We've got to be close enough to God. Are you listening? We've got to be close enough to God that God could speak to us and use us for His glory and His honor. From such turn away, from such people don't have relationships with, from such mentality, from such attitude, from such characteristics, from such activity, turn away from that. Be, be shed of that. Don't be involved in that. Don't do that. Our discernment, number two, notice our division. <laughs> from such turn away. That word turn... It means to shun and avoid. And by the way, did you notice that's not a suggestion, that's a command. Yeah, but that was for Timothy, right? It was for Timothy, but it's also for everybody else who reads Second Peter chapter 3, verse number 5. From such turn away. We cannot embrace the world's ideas. We cannot let the world influence our church, but our church ought to do its part and influence our world. Uh, the, the church is being turned into the world, but the world should be being like the church. Number three, and we're done. Look in verse 14. Our dedication. Our dedication. Look what Paul says. I love this verse. But continue thou. It's almost like Paul, as he is pinning these words to Timothy, he could put, he could put, he could have put just the word Timothy there. But continue, Timothy. He could have put just one name there. But continue, Timothy. And that would have meant only Timothy has to continue. But notice the word he used. He used the word thou. The word thou means, listen carefully please, the word thou means you. <laughs> Whoever's reading 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14, that's who he's talking to. But continue thou, continue you, put your name there, continue Pastor Grimes, continue Lirash Church, continue you who are reading this. We must be dedicated to continuing. No matter how bad society gets, we must continue. The word continue means, listen carefully, to go on after an interruption to go on or to keep on in the same course of action, it also means to last or to endure. The world we live in has a way of dragging us down, but we have to continue. The world has a way of wearing us out, but we have to continue. The world has a way of tearing us apart, but we have to continue. We have to continue because our community needs us to continue. We have to continue because our children need us to, to, to continue. We have to continue because what we're doing is too important to stop now. We have to continue because we're doing what God's called us to do, and we're doing it where God's called us to do it from. Continue. Continue. Continue what? Preach. Sing. Pray. To give. To go. To serve. And to continue looking for that glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. 2020. 
Let's continue. Stand to your feet tonight, please. I want to ask, as we do every year, ask those who are 